In this video, I'm going to discuss the condition states as they pertain to wearing surface. And this includes all, all wearing surfaces, the, the rigid and the flexible, the asphalt bituminous and the cementitious. And this is our basic chart. As we move from left to right, we move from the green to red, and the green is good, the yellow is fair, the orange is poor and the red is severe and I've bolded condition state 3 because that's where I'm going to begin uh, discussing defects and, and usually if there's distress on the wearing surface there's a defect usually a good place to begin is placing that at least temporarily in state 3 and, and determining if if it should scatter to 2 or if it should scatter to 4 so either side so condition state three is is uh, a good a good place to begin, and this is uh, table seventy three, uh, the manual bridge inspection. Just to show you what what we're going to discuss, this 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 chart's available in chapter nine of the manual, uh, wearing surface, the condition state definitions, and you can see the green, yellow, orange, red at the top. To clarify, our deck is in this image on the left, and our approach items are on the right, and it's clearly delineated at that structural expansion joint so that there's a clear delineation um, between these items. And to, to further clarify, the deck wearing surface is a square footage, and it's the portion above the floor carrying traffic, and the approach wearing surface is the portion beyond in this in this example it's beyond the approach slab and that gap you know between the blue and the red square there is the approach slab if there's no approach slab then your approach wearing surface obviously begins at at the bridge extent and it goes it goes a distance or a length beyond the bridge approach wearing surface is an each and that was determined by committee approach slab is square footage and approach slab, largely we're looking for any sort of settlement or um, some sort of impact due to the, the reinforced, uh, reinforced slab underneath. But, but certainly use this guidance, the wearing surface guidance, to help code and, and, and uh, get the appropriate rating for approach slabs as well. It's a portion on top. To give you an idea of, of, of some of the uh, discrepancies we see when we when we do um, wearing surface inspections, this this is uh, four different uh, uh, ways, to, four different um, maps, defect maps for the same bridge, and this was done in in four different ways, four different um, ways to collect this data, three different inspectors, and then one non-destructive way. And so you can see some of the variance that we might get if, if we're not quantitative and objective. So I encourage inspectors to, to please uh, measure and please be objective and, and take, take the extra time, especially when there's uh, defects that could impact safety or could impact um, uh, a, poor, a poor rating. So, so in, in, in the same vein, just to do some mental math, because that's a large part of what we're doing when we're coding the wearing surface portion, take a moment and uh, try to determine how much orange is, is there within this, within this area. If you need to, hit, hit the pause button on the video. Hopefully you're somewhere near 5%. And notice if we cluster all of these squares together, that it that it fills up one row or most of one row within this within this grid. And usually, if if you if you can cluster them mentally, cluster the deficiencies mentally, it will help you get an idea of of overall area uh, deficient. So this is what five percent scattered and five percent clustered looks like. Now, if we if we up the ante a little bit, go up to seven percent. This is what seven percent looks like. And this is what 10% looks like. And 10% is right around when, when planning and programming start to get involved and discussions are initiated for, should we replace this wearing surface? Should we protect it? Should we, you know, there's, there's, there's money discussions that, that should take place right around this 10% threshold. 
because you're getting beyond the the uh, diminishing return. You're getting the diminishing returns for patching and, and uh, just the minor repair items. So that's what 10% looks like. And this is what 15% looks like. 15% is, is pretty pretty significant, a large chunk of, of the area. 15%, if you remember when we used to do condition rating, um, condition rating the poor, the 15% is the tipping point. So this is this would be the tipping point for a poor versus a fair on the one, two, three, four for condition rating. And again, if we cluster that, you can see that that's, that's taking up three rows, still 15%. And what we're asking inspectors to do within condition state language is, is to not only say this much distress, this much not distress, but, but instead this much and severe, this much poor, and this much fair. So we're, we're asking the quantities to be within one of the uh, four condition states. So take a moment, hit pause on the video, and try to determine how much percentage is orange, which would be poor, how much percentage red, which would be severe, and how much percentage yellow, which would be fair. The, the rest or the non-shaded boxes are going to be all of your good um, or condition state ones. So take a moment. And I'm hoping your numbers came up somewhat close to the ones above, 9% fair or condition state 2, 6% poor, condition state 3, and then 1% severe. And, and if you're like me, it's, it's easier to find the, the worst portions and begin coding the quantities within the worst portions and then begin moving uh, into the less worse. And inspectors within SMS are able to code either the quantity in square footage or the quantity and percentage. You can toggle back and forth between the two depending on whichever is, is easier to, to get an idea or to quantify. So going back to our chart, you've got your, your stratification from left to right. And the guidance that we receive, national guidance from AASHTO, is whether or not that is effective. And effectiveness has a lot to do with what's underneath that wearing course. And starting with condition state 3, limited effectiveness is condition state 3. So limited, um, and then we'll see how these scattered. So, But first we have to answer what, what on earth does effective mean. Effective, uh, really, wearing surface does two primary, uh, fulfills two primary roles. It preserves what's underneath, and it, it provides a smooth uh, transition, smooth riding surface. So preservation and rideability are, are the two functions of, of the wearing surface. Substantially effective is going to be condition state two, and that's where, say for example, you have a patch, and you have now um, you have now a sound patch. That would be condition state two. fully effective condition state one and something that's no longer effective would be condition state four. Another example condition state four would be this is the top surface and the next year this is the underside. So where the you've got matching active moisture on the underside, unprotected structural elements matched with the top side which would be something that looks like this. There's a patch upon a patch with the concrete rubble. Obviously the concrete Vertical faces are abrading against each other, producing this white, white dust. So, so you've got your top side, and underside. This is um, this is an unprotected floor, and the wearing surface um, was not effective. So, in order to dump something into condition state four, it has to be obviously bad on top, or um, actively unprotected on the underside as well. So, matching those up would, would be very important. The quantities that here have the asphalt patch, these, these quantities, this square footage that has the asphalt patch here would be condition state four. Cracking is, is a defect that we look for in wearing surfaces. And again, it, it goes, goes back to if you've got cracking that is wide, something more than 0 0.05 inch. And this, this, these are dimensions that Ashto has gotten from ACI. Uh, 0 0.05 inch would be condition state three. 
And a uh, good question is how do we quantify a linear defect within a square footage uh, condition state? So, so the guidance is do something that is quantifiable and repeatable. So you, if you look at the top surface, you've got your lane lines, you've got um, these, these zones. If there's just certainly just one crack running the whole length, you could just do a one foot width along the length, that one foot time the length. But if, if they're spaced uh, within three foot here and, and you, you can quantify, um, just try to get the, 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 an area that's repeatable and quantifiable. So the lane lines are going to be helpful there. And if it's no longer effective, again, dump it into state four. This is a wide crack. These, this would be condition state three. And the, the, the less, less uh, the smaller cracks, the tighter cracks, state two and state one. Rutting, state three, shallow rutting, state two, shallow is something less than one inch. Um, delaminations or an unsound patch would be condition state three. If that delamination, uh, if that patch is getting worse and worse, state three is where it should start. And something that is a sound patch or small delamination is going to be state two. If there's some sort of traffic bouncing, now this image is probably a better example of condition state four, where you have uh, maybe a substantial traffic bouncing or even traffic that has to swerve to miss something. Obviously, that would be condition state four, that, that rectangular area, that square footage. And a very important note about wearing surfaces in condition state four, you'll, you'll um, Note or remember that for national bridge elements or structural elements that carry live load and dead load, that carry a uh, load path, if whenever we dump something into state four, it would, it would then trigger an analysis. And within that 90 day period, that reviewer was responsible for uh, getting analysis done and, and deciding whether or not that quantity should be moved back to state three. That's not the case with non-structural elements, or in this case, wearing surface or the bridge management elements. They, they, they're not carrying, uh, they're not responsible for transmitting live load um, through through the load path. So, so once its uh, quantity goes into state four, it can stay there. There's no analysis period. There's no um, number crunching or structural analysis that's required. So that's an important note, uh, the difference between national bridge elements and bridge management elements or national bridge elements and agency develop elements. There's not that back and forth from four to three. This concludes the uh, wearing surface discussion. Should you have uh, more questions, please refer to chapter nine of the uh, manual bridge inspection. And currently this chart for wearing surface, the guidance um, is on for, for element level is on pages 187 and 188.